Tune got bars. This NOPE. Nigga off the road E. What up, fun? Shout out my wildlife niggas. Shout out my 1900 block niggas. Hoes outside. We out here. Life is a gamble, as a child I got my shamble up If you dream of ballin' then you gotta get your handles up Lot of niggas ramble tough, me I say they playin' Was gangsta about a nigga that sprayin' but never aimin' nothing. I'm from a slum with quite a few done got fronted I'm from a slum with quite a few done got done And word to my moon and my sun And nobody offered an onion when I was low Used to scan the trash for food when mama ain't had no dough And this is real shit Lord, I'm living with some issues I ain't deal with Sometimes I wanna pull that trigger, hit the kill switch Real quick, cause I'm real sick And going under like sinking a real ship I feel like most my niggas envy me my bitch. Uh, shout out to my boy Lone Um, he ain't been, uh He ain't been feeling good, you know what I'm saying I don't know what the fuck happened to this nigga But he's been in the hospital and shit And, uh I guess he, he doing better now. You know, I hit him up on Snapchat and shit. So, shout out to you, Loon. Yo, you really the plug, dog. I used to love Loon. I Need a Girl Remix. Oh, man. Not that nigga, Loon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, remember the nigga that went to Ferris with us who I used to rap with? Uh, he was a skinny dude. Skinny brown skin dude. He had long hair. How long? Like, long. Like, long. I think I know who you're talking about. It was uh, him. He had a, a brother. He was a short, light skin yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to hang out with me and Jay Lee and Melvin and all yeah, of us. Yeah. We used to rap together and shit. Yeah, that, that's you know we we still rock. So you know he was in uh for everybody that's listening, uh he was in a group uh with me back in the day or whatever you know. So um the intro music is uh off his new project that's coming out. Um you know so uh, definitely show show him some love. Uh, He's got a YouTube video, you know what I'm saying? He's got a couple videos out now. Like, he's he's on his grind, so shout out to Loon. Loon Toon, the goon, you know what I'm saying? You can follow him on Snapchat. Uh, you don't have to find that. I don't, I don't know his Snapchat name because I got his number. That's, that's how he's in mine. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, what's happening, everybody, though? Shane G, C. Wood in the building. You already know. We back. Um... Check out uh, our YouTube page. We've been, you know, uploading uh, a little bit more content on there. Um, pretty much on the, the political spectrum. I've been doing, like, academic-style videos where it's like I'm just talking in the background and it's like a bunch of memes of Donald Trump doing stupid shit. So, yeah, that's what it is. But, uh, you know, check that out. You know, stay informed. Um, Midwest Coast podcast on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. Um, hit us with the five star rating on iTunes. Uh, sus- you know, subscribe on there as well. Follow us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Facebook. Where can they find you at, C Wood? You can always find me on Instagram. That's where I live at. That's where I breathe at. Respect at the classic underscore Wood. Definitely respect the classic, man. I try to drop one in one or two at least every week. So, what was your okay? So we did this before. You were kind of like more um, helping me with the show or whatever, but there was a survey, or it was a tournament actually that the Pod Squad did. It was like the best Black '90s sitcoms, basically. Yeah. And it was tournament style, so basically it was matchups, you know, and everybody voted, and then whoever won the most votes would it, you know, proceed to the next we round. We need to throw that on the YouTube channel. They, we, we did it on Twitter. I mean, Pod Squad, what up? We might have to recreate that. Q, I know you was the one that uh, kind of orchestrated that. So, you know, what's happening? Let's let's get it back together. Well, Q, um, do it in March. Well, March Madness is hot in brackets and all that. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. Do it in March. Man. Yeah, that'll be a good idea. That'll be fire. Um, I think, low-key, I think that's when we did it this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, we did that, and I think if I'm not, if I remember correctly, I think Martin won, which I agree with. Like, yes, yeah. that's, that's my favorite yeah. '90s show of all time. I mean, I already, was yours. Like, I already know we should be in the final four. Cause, yeah, of course. Fresh Prince was up in there. Exactly. Martin, uh, the Wayans brothers. Um, I think a different world was in the mix. In uh, Living Color, like it was a gang of it yeah. was it was all the good stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All the good stuff that. 
Steve Harvey show, um, everything, you know what I mean? Everything that, that niggas was watching. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite, though? Like, was was Martin... Was Martin, that one for you or um, cause that was my that was my joint like I still love Martin today like it's new like, yeah you already know I got it on the <laughs> iTunes like I watch it like it's brand new every time I cut it on but uh really I think it was a tie between Martin and the Wayans Brothers I think it was more Wayans Brothers just because you know I got a brother you know what I'm saying you you know how you are when, yeah, you, when you and yeah. your brother get out y'all act out so it was, it was more relatable, you know what I'm saying? Martin, Martin was hilarious, uh-huh. but it wasn't relatable at the time because I was I feel so it. young. I feel it, I feel it. So the Wayans Brothers is more my favorite than Martin, but it was definitely a tie. All right, well, um, let me get into the uh, to the real shit real quick before we, you know, get off into the fun <laughs> stuff. Cool. Um... So this is from USA Today. Uh, this this dropped today. Uh, this news today's August six, by the way. Um, says here's the biggest news you missed this weekend. The UN Security Council slaps North Korea with strong sanctions. The United Nations Security Council on Saturday imposed sharply increased economic sanctions on North Korea, worth one third of its annual three billion dollar exports. Three billion dollars worth of exports. An effort to rein in Pyongyang's nuclear and ballistic missile program. China, which holds enormous financial leverage against North Korea, joined other members of the council in the 15 to 0 vote. The sanctions ban a variety of exports and prohibit countries from increasing the number of North Koreans working abroad, among other penalties. Nikki Haley, the United States ambassador to the UN, said the vote put the North Korean dictator on notice and represented a strong United step holding North Korea accountable for its behavior. So, I don't know how I feel about the whole North Korea thing, right? Because it's like, I don't know how you handle a dictator who's like so evil to his people, but he's not really a threat to anybody else. Yeah. As of yet. Like, he's been testing missiles and, you know, it's, it's talking about Kim Jong-un. Like, yeah. he's a... Uh, He's been testing missiles and, you know, like, it's been, I guess, being able to get, like, further and further distances or whatever, but there's no evidence that the missiles that he's able to fire at long distances, he can attach a nuclear warhead and fire at long distances. Like, there's no no reason to think he can do that yet. Yeah. So, it's like, if we're imposing unnecessary sanctions on them, like, why... Why act aggressively towards them when they're not really a direct threat to us right now? And like they're such a small country, like they they really can't be a direct threat. To, like, cause even if they have nuclear capabilities, we do too. So ours are gonna be better than theirs. Like, there's no way they spend the same amount of money on their military as we do. Like, yeah. America's huge compared to North Korea. They can't feed their own people. They can't pay for electricity in North Korea so yeah. they're not on our level when it comes to that so it's like this is all kind of just hysteria and we're just doing unnecessary stuff I feel like acting you know even though it's not in a military aggressive fashion it's like we're, we're still acting aggressively towards them letting them know like yo we don't like y'all yeah. and it's like why <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. like I don't know like it just it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me because like I said, they're not a threat. It's it's gonna be the the Iraq situation all over again if we go too far with it, yeah. where we just impose our will for no reason. For no reason on a country that's not messing with us, yeah. and we saw how bad that ended up. Two hundred thousand civilians dead, minimum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like lots of, you know, we know people in the military. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have somebody on our show. Um, Soon that you know served overseas and you know he can really you know break down some of the the not so pretty side of war that's always glorified in the news and stuff you know what I mean yeah. but you know so we know people who have been through it and you know like so are we ready to do that again in North Korea like that doesn't sound like a good idea to me not at all you know so you know what are, what are your thoughts on imposing sanctions on North Korea because also in this bill 
that uh, the that I, I think Congress, um, it was either Congress or you know the Senate or you know it was one of the uh, government bodies. They um they basically put sanctions on Iran, Russia, and North Korea. And the thing about putting the the sanctions on Iran is. That goes against the deal that Obama set up, uh, the nuclear deal, basically yeah. them saying, like, look, we're not going to go above this amount of nuclear, you know, materials in the country, you know, just for our power grid. We're not going to exceed this amount. Y'all can come in and check it or whatever. Yeah. Just don't put any new sanctions on us. That's your part of the deal. Yeah. You know, and that's how the deal was made. And, you know, now Trump and them in office and they're like, nah, we're just going to go ahead and throw them sanctions on you anyway. Yeah. And then they threw more on Russia, so that goes against the whole Donald Trump is, you know, working with Putin secretly and all of that because he's imposing more sanctions on them, which is going to hurt them economically. So, so what's going on? <laughs> like, I was just, I was just going to lead off with that. Like, it's a lot of sanctions going around. Like, they just throwing them around. Yeah. Like they for real are just throwing them around like a kid with power. But um. I kind of get, I kind of get the North Korea thing, like, okay, so they leader, he, Kim, Kim made it known, like, he doesn't like the states, he made that known, very clear, he doesn't like this, he's like, okay, here's a good example, remember you was a kid, you hated somebody so bad, you was looking for any reason to beat him up or fight him, yeah, like, that's kind of yeah. where Kim is, like, he hate us so much, but he has no reason or no authority to do anything. So he's finding reasons. Like when he's like, "Y'all put Trump in office, I'm killing everybody." Like, <laughs> that's how he felt. Like he was just looking for any stupid thing that was just gonna make him a little mad enough to take it there. So I see why, mm-hmm. and everybody knows what with authority, you always got enemies. That's really what it is, yeah. and it's not like they. They're not intelligent. Like, they know if you make enough threats in the right direction, you're going to find somebody who won't get nervous, who won't get shook. Yeah. So, if they do these little tests with these missiles and everything, they might target, they might hit a nerve with the right country. You know what I'm saying? And get somewhere and turn into a possible threat. Now, what, what everybody wants is them never to become a real threat. That's really what it is. Right. So, that's why they're going overboard. I mean, so I get that. If you're going to go out of control and get power hungry, do it with my safety. So I respect that. <laughs> so if you're going to shut them down prematurely, make sure I'm still alive and healthy. I, that's the main goal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not I'm not fully against it, but we do have a strong reputation <laughs> for unnecessarily imposing will on people. Right. So I get both sides. <laughs> the only reason I'm leaning more towards us is because my my safety is involved. In yeah, it. I feel it. I mean, but the thing is, like, it's not really our safety that we need to be concerned about. It's like the, the safety of the people in Seoul, South Korea. So it's like, because those are our allies, and you know they're innocent in the whole thing. So it's like if, because that's that's what's gonna happen. Like if we. For whatever reason, if, if tensions escalate between the United States and North Korea to the degree that there's military action taken, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If it gets to that point, they're not going to be able to attack us, you know what I mean, on our on our grounds or whatever. So yeah. they're going to immediately launch on Seoul. Now, they do have nuclear capabilities that can hit Seoul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's close enough. And then that, that impact could reach China and Japan and all the other places like near it because yeah. it's a nu- you know what I mean like yeah. nuclear impact is a totally different concept that like we haven't seen in our lifetime yeah. you know what I mean like the atomic bomb in World War II or whatever but obviously that was way before us so yeah. you know what I'm saying like I'm not trying to see that in my yeah. lifetime like Never. at all Never. I don't ever want to see I want nuclear that to stay a yeah exactly <laughs> exactly Trump tweeted about it, of course. Uh, the United Nations Security Council just voted 15-0 to sanction North Korea. China and Ro- Russia voted with us. Very big financial impact. United Nations resolution is the single largest economic sanctions package ever on North Korea. Over $1 billion in costs to North Korea. See, like, why, like, so why would Kim Jong-un not want to retaliate negatively? Yeah. You see what I'm saying, right? Now. 
Now we just gave him a reason to. Yeah. Before, like you said, it was like kind of rumored. Yeah. It was like, okay, he's launching missiles in the ocean or whatever, but whatever. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that could be for anything. Like, he could just be testing missiles, like, yeah. just to be doing it. Like, we don't know why he's doing that. Let's slap some sanctions on him just in case it's for us. <laughs> like, you know what I'm let's saying? That openly, makes you look guilty. Let's openly disrespect him. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, <laughs> like, but Your you Marquise. see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I knew it, I knew he was going. Um, I knew, yeah, but, like the thing in, in, but like that's that's like that's like in this episode of, uh, of Weeds, right? Like towards the end of the season, where Nancy was trying to find out if this dude standing behind her was a drug dealer, right? Yeah. And so her son was like, "DEA, hands up!" Like, just just say it real yeah. loud or whatever. And then the dude started acting shook, like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. If you act guilty in a situation, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm like, yo, fuck everybody who ever talks shit about me or whatever, and you start acting guilty, that means you've been talking shit, yeah. right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if I'm launching missiles and it ain't got shit to do with you, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, you slap some Jacksons on me and you get, <laughs> you get defensive, like, wait, hold up. Who are those missiles for? It's like, oh, wait a minute, should we be shooting okay. these missiles at you? What you been doing? Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's, you gotta look at everything from, from all perspectives. Like, cause if we were in North Korea, you know what I'm saying? And a bunch of sanctions just got slapped on us by the big bad United States. We would hate us. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, so it's, you know, it's, it's not good. Um, you know, he's just going in there. He's just way too hawkish. Like I, I, I remember during the, the campaign trail when he was, you know, basically saying he wants to, I mean, he was saying he wanted to bomb the shit out of everybody too. He literally said that, but he also was talking about how he wanted to spend a lot of the money here on infrastructure and bring the jobs back to America and all of this, like into end, end the stupid wars and all of that, but he's yeah. escalating everywhere. So when you're escalating everywhere, like how are you, you can't end the wars. Like the, again, he added $58 billion on top of the already overblown military budget yeah. so it's like that's insane like and then i was watching this debate between jank uger and ben shapiro and ben shapiro was basically you know saying how we can't afford single payer health care medicare for all because it'd be too expensive that was basically his argument yeah and i'm like all the money that we spend in the military all the money that we like if you took a, a very small percentage like yeah. if you took 10 Fifteen percent of the military budget, and applied it to Bernie Sanders' plan for free college and Medicare for all, it would pay for it every yeah. year. You know what I'm saying? It would pay for it, and you would still have that money will ultimately end up coming back to if they invest in education. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's an investment in the future. Like when people are educated, they're able to go out there and start businesses, and you know, be innovative and, and things of that nature. And, and that's. Ooh. Who doesn't want to get paid by the government? Like, even if you don't want to be in a branch of the military, even if you started your own company, if the government reaches out to your company, you're going to say yes. You want that money. And all the corporations do it. Like, that's why yeah. when they act like government handouts, quote unquote, are a bad thing, it's like, well, yo, y'all should stop taking them first then. Like Exxon Mobil and all these like huge oil companies and all of that, yeah. they take huge government subsidies. A government yeah. subsidy is just money given to them by the government. That's all. It's just a fancy way of saying that. Yeah. If it was us getting a check from the government, it would be called a welfare check. Yeah. But since it's a corporation, it's called a subsidy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no difference. Literally, there's zero difference in in that money. Like it's just the amount and who it's being given to. That's it. You know what I mean? And the name you call it. So, yeah. you know, with all that being said, it's like, you know, the government invests in business all the time. So, of course, people are going to say yes to that. But you, you can't have businesses set up that have a perverse incentive. And what I mean by that is like, so like health insurance companies, for example, they're just immoral by nature, in my, in my opinion, because the whole point of the insurance company First of all, it's a company, so the number one thing is, you know, fiduciary responsibility is yeah. making bread. That's number one. 
You know what I'm saying? Their number one cause isn't health care yeah. or paying for your doctor bills or whatever. Their number one thing is to maximize profit. Yeah. That's what it, uh, any company or corporation's first responsibility is. The second responsibility is whatever they say it is. You know what I'm saying? So in order to cut corners and to maximize profit, sometimes they got to skimp out on your health care. And they'll find ways to not provide all of the health care they're supposed to provide for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... And then they can basically be in charge of how much health care you get. They can price gouge, like all this type of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, Big Pharma does it too with the prices of medicine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it goes hand in hand. So if you have a single payer Medicare for all system, basically what that'll do is, for one, it would either allow the government to negotiate the prices with the insurance companies and the government would be the go between between us and the insurance companies and we wouldn't have to deal with them. You know, or you would eliminate insurance companies, period, and the doctors would just bill the government every time yeah. anybody has to go to the doctor, and it would just all come out of tax dollars, like everything else. Yeah. Like the police, like teachers, like roads, like the military, like firefighters, like yeah. public hospitals, you know what I'm saying? Like public libraries, like anything that we all use as a common good that's paid for with tax dollars. Medicare also falls in there in that same category. And if you just expand it to everybody, it would be cheaper overall for all Americans, and we would get better uh, results, because that's that's shown in every other country that has it. They have way better results than us. We're 37th in the world when it comes to healthcare. You know what I'm saying? So We're some underachievers. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, you know... Um, we never really did care about our own people. We got this, we could always make more mentality. Yeah, like, and that's that. That's based on, that's that's from capitalism. And, like, capitalism is good in certain areas because, like, when it comes to anything that's not necessary to live, I feel like capitalism is good. So when I say that, healthcare is off the table because that's necessary to live. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, things, things in that realm. Like, the government should make sure that its citizens you know, have some sort of standard of living, yeah. I feel like. I feel like they are responsible to a degree. Like, I'm not saying you're going to get rid of homeless people or anything like that, but I do feel like, like the majority of homeless people, for one, like, I don't know, well, I don't know if it's a majority, but a significant number of uh, homeless people are veterans. Yeah. There should be no such thing as homeless veterans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Period. Like, they should have dorms set up if if need be. Especially you know that, what I'm saying? that like, military account they got. I mean, but that's the thing. Not even all of them have that. Like, No, I'm saying the government. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, They got enough money to where they can find these vets and yes, put them somewhere. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're if not, you're homeless. They're not allocating the money to the right. You part. know, if you're homeless based on other circumstances or whatever, like times got hard and things of that nature, like I... I also think that the government should have programs set up to help you get back on your feet. There should be jobs programs. There should be, you know what I'm saying, things like that. But when it comes to veterans who fought in wars, like if you fought overseas, like if you, whatever, like if you're a veteran from the United States military, there's no excuse for, for any of them to be homeless. So you almost got segue to keep going. Yeah. You almost got segue. Almost. There's no reason for, for any of them to. So it's like... You know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's disgusting. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it just, it really is. And, you know, um, there's there's so many other programs that this money could be being used for, and it's, it's just being wasted. And now we're putting sanctions on other countries, and, you know, and then they're going to use that as the excuse of why they overblow the military. Uh, that's why we had to add so much more money to the military, because we knew Kim Jong-un was going to be on some bullshit, so... You know, we had to get ready for it, and they'll they'll spin it somehow. But yeah, you know, so that's that's you know that's what it is right now. Trump's being a hawk. Yeah. What else is new? So <laughs> now, time for the segue. With that, mm -hmm. it's a lot of things that we do mm -hmm. as patriots of the United States, I should say, okay. where we live by a certain way, we follow those guidelines, expectations. How to live the right way is pretty much what I'm leading to. Okay. In my opinion, 
we fucking up on multiple levels. I'm okay. going to just say it like that. Um, for one, like you said, the military thing is just one thing. It should never be. You know what I'm saying? You fight. You fought for your country. You put your life on the line yeah. in the absolute worst way. Like, it's yeah. no worse than what they do. They send you off to a country with a gun. You outnumbered by that country. Yeah. And you're doing it for your country. And yeah. then when you get back. They treat you like shit. Exactly. So it's a way they expect you to live. Now, this is another point before I get to what, what the question is. The way they transition them is fucking horrible. Like, when their time is up, they give you a pat on the back. They offer you some services. And they mm-hmm. send you back out to the world. And they expect you to be completely normal. It's like, like prison. You, like you just got out of college. It's, it's like it's like when a nigga's been in prison for 10 years. And exactly. they send you back out. Like, all right, like it, figure shit it out. changes like you. You've been, you've been put. Shit changes you and the world changes and you are not aware of those changes. Yeah. Like they put Like you, imagine somebody who was in prison 10 years ago who just got out. Like they smartphones you, is new to them yeah. basically. You know what I'm saying? They like, put you they put you in this inhumane environment. Yeah. With a lot of discipline, but it's still not humane discipline. Right. And then they send you back out into the world and be like, "All right, I need you to grow personality, some some social skills." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And catch up with the world and what's going on. Figure it out. Start a family and be happy. Mm-hmm. And that's not what you've been doing your whole life. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not even how you live. So, right. now you got to relearn everything you should already know. Mm-hmm. Another point is, is how we approach our education and growing up. Like, we go through school our whole life, handheld, handheld, handheld. Mm-hmm. You in school, people take you to school, people give you lunch. People do all these things for you. Yeah. And then as soon as you turn, we're going to say, we're going to get debatable. We're going to say between 16 and 18 is usually when you get kicked out the door and it's like, all right, get a job and be responsible for every fucking thing mm-hmm. that you've learned and you haven't learned. I'm going to open that own. window up a little bit more. I'm going to say 16 to 21. Because some people are able to hold on a little bit longer. Yeah, but I didn't want to push it that far because after a few years, you get enough experience to where you can hold down the bare minimum. Between 16 and 18, it's impossible for you to have a bare minimum under you. Like, if you apply right, for so a job at 18, you don't have five years of experience in okay, anything. Okay, okay. Three years. You know saying. what I'm saying? Like, you don't have that experience in anything to, to hold your own. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So... The biggest thing is, I'm going to spin it off because it was supposed to be about something completely different, but the segue took me here. Um, is is there a standard? Is there a certain way that we should live? One of the biggest things is because um, recently I had a friend who's in a relationship. Biggest issue with the relationship, he has no friends in relationships. Mm-hmm. And she has nothing but friends in relationship. Mm-hmm. So she's like, how you expect to be in an adult relationship with no friends? It's like having a married... It's like being married and having no married friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like this expectation on them that, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. gotta have similar friends. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have somebody at that point in their life that's similar to you. Mm-hmm. And then... They can relate to what you're going yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it, to to her, it's more like a maturity thing. Like, you still immature. You got a bunch of single friends well, who running around. I was going to say, I think it's... I don't even think it's necessarily a maturity thing, though. I think it's on... I mean, that, that definitely plays a role, I think. But I think it's also, to a degree, an insecurity thing. Yeah. Just because... Like, if, if you're a dude... Like, if you're in a relationship with a dude and the dude's, you know what I'm saying, all his homies are single or whatever, you're going to assume that when he goes out with them, he's out there doing with single dudes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to yeah. assume that he's going to just kind of chill and maybe just sip his drink or whatever and let them do their thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she's going to assume that you out there chasing ass, too. <laughs> That's what it is. And yeah. that is insecurity. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Unless you've given her reason to think that, you know what I mean? Like, just... Her assuming that based on your other friends or whatever, like, but it's also true that birds of a feather flock together. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So typically, if you're hanging out with a bunch of wild niggas, you're probably a wild nigga too. You know what I'm saying? So I get both sides of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but but it is insecurity though. Also, like, let's. Just I wouldn't. Real. I wouldn't say that. 
Well, I'm uh, not saying under, that in a under, negative way. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not implying that insecurity is negative. I'm just saying that is what it is, though. Like, I, I get what you're saying. I, I guess I'm just looking. I'm trying to look for a better word for it. There's because not, yeah, because like, I mean, because like, that word has a negative implication, yeah. but I don't mean it that way. I really yeah, don't. Yeah, like, I get what you're saying because I got the exact picture in my head. Like people grow and develop at different points. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't control that. And so, based on people's experiences, yeah. like if 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 a female is with a dude when she's I don't know, let's say she's 22, 23, right? Yeah, and she's with a dude and. You know, she's cool in that relationship. You know, cool by dude standards, quote yeah. unquote. Like, oh yeah, she let me go all my homies and like yeah. she gonna be tripping. Like she cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that kind of like now if that dude is out with a whole bunch of wild dudes and he cheated, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and got caught or you know, whatever, whatever. Now when she's 25, 26 and she gets with another dude and that same situation comes up, like, hey, I'm gonna go out with the homies. And she's like, mm, I kind of know your homies. They be on some some wild shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember what happened last time I got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want that to happen again. That that is an insecurity, but it's a reasonable yeah. one. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It makes sense to be insecure in that way yeah. because of your ba- your past experience. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm not. Fool me I'm not saying it in a negative way. That word just has a negative connotation yeah, to it. Yeah. But, I don't mean but that's the closest to that, painting the accurate picture that right, you can get. Exactly. And then another situation is, um, I was actually watching this show with you know some of the homies, uh, Carmichael's, and the girl, the girl Maxine, her sister was a stripper. Mm-hmm. She a diehard feminist. She like, I believe in supporting women and what they do. We live in a society where. You're gonna get exploited for your sexuality as a woman. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Like this is <laughs> yeah, this is a way where women can take control of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that to a extent. To and a it's like extent. yeah, like she was like, I support. So you can't judge them. She was basically saying, don't judge them. True. Because they took advantage of how the world treats them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I respected that. But when she found out her little sister uh-huh. was a stripper, that went left. Real fast. She was like, you can't be a stripper. You know what I'm saying? We was raised better than that. Mm-hmm. And she just went on this rant. So I feel like, like I feel that like goes that. back to the original point. Like, is there an expectation on how you're supposed to live your life? See, at, I feel like point? that with different subjects, right? Like, because I believe, I believe in principle that freedom ultimately should be the Tr- you know what I mean? Like that—that's the way to go ultimately. Like yeah. when it comes to the law, and like when it comes to like the government and yeah. stuff like that. I feel like ultimately you should give people the right to do what they want as long as they are not infringing on anybody else's rights. Yeah, that's pretty much my standard when it comes to. So when it comes to drugs, I feel like drugs should basically be legal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they should be legal, tax and regulated, just like other drugs are, like alcohol yeah. is, like cigarettes are, like pharmaceutical pills are, like all that type of stuff. Yeah. It should be regulated the exact same way. You know what I mean? So that way meth won't exist because it'll be regulated out of the market. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, crack won't exist because it would be regulated out of the market. You see what I'm saying? Like stuff yeah. like that. Like the really bad, like makes your skin peel off type stuff yeah. that would just be regulated out of existence and you know, whatever. So that's how I feel about it on a legal government perspective as far as like how society should run. That does not then mean though that I promote doing these different things. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because I feel like you should have the freedom to do it doesn't yeah. mean you should. Yeah. It's like with free speech. I feel like, you know, like because a lot of people make this mistake and they'll say hate speech is not free speech. That's not true. Hate speech is free speech as long as it remains speech. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The KKK can say whatever they want. The Nazis can say whatever they want. I don't have to agree with it, but they have the right to say it. I don't think they should say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they got the right. They have the right to. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. that's how I feel about a lot of different things. Stripping is one of them. I don't necessarily want my little cousin stripping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But do I think strip clubs should exist? Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm so, so I get that. Like, 
you know, I, I don't want people in my family doing certain things, but that doesn't mean that I think society shouldn't have the option. Shouldn't have to the options, them. yeah. So I guess that's, yeah, that's how I feel about that. I mean, as far as growth overall, it's a lot of gray area to it. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as, like, those situations, like, as far as the military, that's all out of our control. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm a That's strong, why I never blame soldiers like, for what's going yeah, on. Like, I blame I'm a, the higher-ups and I blame, you know, the government because they're the ones making the decisions. The soldiers just got to do uh, it. I'm a strong... I have, like, a strong feeling. Like, I never, like, try to dig too deep into, like, theories and, mm. you know, stuff like that. But I got this strong feeling that the government, like, puts a lot of money into, like, obvious funds. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily use it. You know what I'm saying? For that reason. Like, they use it for personal reasons. Absolutely. Like, think about it. If they they wanted to do something that's strictly for them, all personal, like, this is going to be our money for strippers, drugs, travel, all all the things that we don't want to come out of our pocket Uh because we're going to need this for future campaigns and all of this other stuff. Yeah. We're going to put it into the military fund. Nobody questions the defense of the country. You know what I'm saying? So if I tell you that we got this stupid three billion dollar military account, everybody in the country gonna assume we the safest place on earth, mm-hmm. and they don't know we blowing it for personal reasons. I see what you mean. You know what I'm saying? So I I never with the military. I don't try to touch. I don't touch it mm-hmm. because the right people go into it for the right reasons, but the wrong people are in charge of it. So it's mixed emotions. As far as, like, the relationship was the heaviest thing to me Mm -hmm. because we're at that point in life where relationships are at the highest level it's going to get. This is the peak it's going to be, like, when we first meet our first love and Mm -hmm. relationships is taken that serious for the first time. So we at the point where when we go out and I got a bunch of single homies and my girl's like, so who's he dating? Is he married? Mm-hmm. Does they have kids? And I'm just like, no, nah, they cool. They chilling. <laughs> That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, what type of problem is that going to be? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I can't control my friend's life. Right. But that's what creates separation of friends and losing friends and growing apart and things like that. Because you become in two different places. True. You know what I'm saying? But it shouldn't be like that in my mind. Like, if my friends are seeing, you got to admit, everybody got that auntie who who probably look good, got all the money in the world, but just don't got a man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's probably rumors that they went around and found, I think she gay. Yeah, it's right. Gay, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's probably that. Like, everybody has that relative, so you got to accept your friends because they friend, your friends might be that relative who just never get married that's true never hold down a relationship so it's, it's kind of awkward to see that dynamic brought to a relationship but as that single friend though like you know what i'm saying like i get it because like because like i'm i'm at that point now where like a lot of my friends are starting to like settle down and like you know what i'm saying being relationships yeah. and you know have kids and all that kind of stuff or whatever so like i understand it my perspective is like I'll talk to you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll hit you up, you know what I'm saying? We Snapchat back and forth, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You'll let me know when you want to hang out or when you can hang out. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's how I basically... Approach it. That's how I approach it as as the single friend. Because I know my time is... I. Whatever, like you yeah, know what I'm saying. Like I got yeah. all the time in the world. Like you when I'm dictate not dictate yours, but yeah, theirs, like, they can't really. Dictate. They can't dictate theirs. Theirs is yeah. based on what their kids got going on, what their yeah. wife got going on, what their girlfriend got going on. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That that whole thing. So I just understand what it is, and I'm like, I, that comes first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Us hanging out comes second, third, fourth on the list. You know what I mean? So you know, I wish more people just understood that. I guess, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, Try not to make it hard on niggas. Like you should never put somebody in a situation where they gotta choose. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You between me? friends like, and the they, relationship you have. Yeah. Like, cause that's basically making them choose between friends and family. Yeah. You're establishing your own family at that point. So. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. Like, I just try not to impose too much. Like even when I do hang out with my uh, friends who like live with they, you know, with who are building their own families and yeah. stuff. Like. You know, like when their wife comes around or whatever, I speak, of course. You know, yeah. hey, how you doing? You good? You know, all of that kind of stuff. And then, 
when they start talking about something or whatever, I'll go sit in another room or I'll go outside for a minute or, you know what I mean? Like, I give people plenty of space. Like, I don't ever want to yeah. be that, dang, this nigga's always here. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll never want to be that dude, so I'm always I'll be like, real with you. I got a lot of friends that I feel like are settlers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, the whole settling down thing is cool. But I think they taking the term settle down too literal and they ended up settling. Like, oh, okay. I've been dealing with her three years off and on. I might as well just stay with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That ain't really what he want, but it ain't the worst option either. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they just in this like permanent content state Mm -hmm. where if you be like, I don't think that's like if you tell him, if you tell him man, he the one in a relationship, I don't think that's a good idea. He'd be like, I really don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he don't care about the consequences, then he's yeah. not die hard in the relationship. Yeah. And then nice. if it's like, nah, I ain't gonna do that because I don't want to mess it up. But you already got it in your mind. Like, he not fully, you know what I'm saying, into not, it. Yeah, he not. So he not it's not. like this, this content state where everybody's literally settling. And I got a lot of friends like that where I feel like, how'd you even meet this person? How'd you end up with them? You know what I'm saying? Or it's like, you met them before and this didn't work out. Why are you repeating this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's at that point, but, you know, we well, all at, that the, situation, we I all think at the point where we adults and you want them to make their own decisions. Yeah. You know but what I'm in, saying? In certain situations, I think it depends. Like, if you met somebody before and it didn't work out, it depends on why it didn't work out before. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you know, know the backstory. You know why it didn't well, work. Yeah, yeah. And, it's you, some bullshit, and you clearly yeah. feel that way. Like, this is your homie, homie mm-hmm. life. Like, you know why this didn't work out. Right. You know why. You really gonna do this again? You probably the reason why it didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? So why would you repeat it again? Nah, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's like, it's a lot to it. And I feel like, I don't really really like it. Like, I feel like it's too much pressure on everything outside of the structure. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. you, that person should know how you are and expect to see the worst as much as they expect to see the good. Like, if you know they got a lot of single friends and that irritates you, you should have it in your mind. You're going to see it a lot and you got to learn to deal with it. Yeah. Just as you... Or if it bothers you that much, then that's not the guy for you. Yeah, like, you know what, you what I'm saying? saying? Like, you got to expect to handle that. You can't just be like, oh, we get to it when we get to it. Nah. Because when you do, it's going to be too late. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then with the with the stripper thing, I'm, I'm 200% in support of strippers, man. <laughs> like, I am. You like, for real. DC, so, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I had my first, I had my first crush on a stripper in <laughs> DC, bro. No exaggeration. The one I saw, I never saw a body complete with a face like that in my life. I think I remember you telling me about her, dog. No, <laughs> like, man. she was amazing. Yeah, I was like, damn. I was like, either I'm really drunk and I only had one drink or, it, or she amazing and it was amateur at night so she might not even be die hard like that you know what I'm saying <laughs> like she could have been off the street and was like let me try it out right but the she reason good. the reason I, I support I'm gonna tell you like this I support drug dealers I support strippers I support every type of well every I would say every type but not every type <laughs> I support every type of job there is except for like the hard stuff like if you were just uh if you a killer i can't support you yeah bro. if you are just if robbing you just, niggas yeah, like, you know like saying, if nah. you just out here like if you thoroughbred shy rack like i'm killing <laughs> to get your money nah i'm cool i can't support that yeah. but all other like if you're a drug dealer that's cool we understand we business minded because here's my thing right here's my thing the ceo of budweiser is a drug dealer the CEO of Newport Cigarettes is a drug dealer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's At one legal. point, Coca-Cola was some drug dealers. They still are. They sell caffeine. Caffeine is a drug. Oh, yeah. All that shit is drugs. But you know I'm talking I'm about like hard drugs. But I'm saying there's no difference. Like I'm yeah, saying, there is there is no difference. You see but what I'm by saying? By government principle. standards, I'm saying in principle there's no difference because we have. How many people die from alcohol poisoning and alcoholism every year? Yeah. And that shit is perfectly legal. How many people die from cancer from smoking cigarettes every year? Yeah. Perfectly legal. How many people die from weed every year? Zero. You see what I'm saying? Illegal. Still on a I don't believe level. that. I think somebody did die from weed, but not in a way 
that you would say like, oh, ain't nobody OD on weed or that. That's what I'm saying. I believe somebody got high and did something dumb. That's and, probably true. But I mean, <laughs> you can attribute that to literally everything, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could say. Because I saw some World Star videos yeah, where people yeah, yeah. high and they was like, oh, let's go do some dumb shit. Yeah, and yeah, I'm no, like, I'm yeah, sure they ain't gonna true. make it out of that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. But, but but that's how I feel like drug sentences should be, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like when you charge somebody with a drug crime, I feel like possession of a drug alone should not be a charge. Yeah. Period. I don't care what the drug is. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. I have less than an ounce of whatever on me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that should not be a charge unless you catch me high while doing something else. Yeah. If I'm high and robbing a store, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tack the possession charge on top of that because you can say that the cocaine made me act this way or whatever. Yeah. Okay, I get that. But if I'm just walking down the street chilling and you just happen to find cocaine on me, no, that should not be a charge. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't do cocaine, by the way. Yeah. Like, just for the record, <laughs> never touched it ever in my life. But just for example, like, I feel that strongly about it. If I have heroin on me, you know what I'm saying? If it's a small amount of heroin, and I'm just minding my business, <laughs> doing my thing, leave me alone. But if I'm robbing people to fit, to fulfill my heroin habit, yeah. then yeah, you can tack that on top of the crime. That's how I feel like it should go. You know what I'm saying? Like, but Because mo- mo- the majority of drug users are not out here robbing people yeah. for, to, for their fix. And so that's 10 to 20% of people. Like, the overwhelming majority of people who use any type of drug have that shit under control and they live a normal yeah. life. So, but in, in that aspect, so that's why the I feel way like if you're the way the world type of paint, drug dealer, you have yeah. to punch all of them. The way the dude from Monster and Red Bull and all of that shit. The way that the, the way that the world kind of puts that in the category, they put it at, as the same thing as like robbers and you know what I'm saying, muggers and stuff like that. Like the Peter Parker effect. But the Peter reason Parker, why, think about it like this: <laughs> with Peter Parker, how did his Uncle Ben get killed? He let a dude go, like, you know what I'm saying? Dude was running out with the money he had robbed or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was like, that's not my business. I don't know what just happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know the situation. I know he's leaving. Right. I'm in his way. I could either get involved in something I don't know about <laughs> or I could just let him go mm-hmm. and stay alive. And he ended up staying alive. So the way they painted it is that that same person was going to come around and kill Uncle Ben. Right. So that's the image that they want to put in. Like, if you see somebody with these drugs, some harm is going to come something. You know what I'm saying? Eventually. True. But, but see, and this is where this is where being educated on these topics comes into play. Because the you have to look at the why. Behind why do people associate violence with drugs? Because that's yeah. basically what it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing. Like, that's how they were able to get my cousin locked up, you know what I'm saying, for, you know, some some unrelated stuff, like, yeah. because they were able to paint, paint him out to be this huge drug dealer, you yeah. know what I'm saying, and so, that worked, that swayed the jury or whatever, but here's the thing, right, why is violence associated with the drug market? That's because it's on the black market. Nobody's, I'm, oh, well, I'm not going to say nobody, but a very small number of people, right, very limited number of people are, um, getting like whatever you get prescribed from your doctor you know yeah. what i'm saying like anything that you would need you know prescribed for your doctor like doctors are not getting their houses ran up in by rival doctors yeah you see what i'm saying yeah. like and if that does happen guess what the doctor can call the police and say hey my house just got robbed yeah. they stole all my money a drug dealer does not have that option. Yeah. A drug dealer cannot call the police and say, hey, the other drug dealer just came and stole three bricks from under yeah. my couch. Yeah. Because it's illegal. So you have to handle these matters in your own hands when you're dealing with that type of money and when you're dealing with, you know, things that are illegal that there's still a demand for. The yeah. proof of this was the mafia back in, in Prohibition when they took, uh, when they made alcohol illegal. They made alcohol illegal. The mafia got really powerful because they were the only ones who were supplying it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's where all of their money came from. Once they made it legal again, the mafia pretty much, they dwindled and ended up having to find other avenues. Yeah. And then they went way underground. And again, like, you heard any mafia shit lately? Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, anything... You know, the Italians whacking people. Yeah, yeah. Like, I haven't heard shit like that lately. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying? I ain't heard no OG gangster situations lately. Not like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, it's mostly 
you're hearing stuff about El Chapo and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people like that. Like it's the, the Italian mafia is not what it used to be. Like I'm sure they still out here and you know yeah. doing their thing. No disrespect. <laughs> but <laughs> like, let me just put that out you're here. Still the mafia. You're still the mafia. But at the end of the day, they're not who they were during Prohibition. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So, and that's gonna be the same thing that would happen with drug cartels if you legalize, tax, regulate drugs. Yeah. They would lose all their power because I would much rather go to CVS or the dispensary to buy my, you know what I'm saying, whatever yeah. it is I want to participate in, than the dude up, up the street, you know what I'm saying, yeah. who I don't really know where he got it from, you know what I'm saying, I just got to, well, if the stuff he had last time was good, so I just got to hope that this is good too, like, but, but I'd rather thing, go to a store, you feel me, like, that's going to eliminate so much of the violence in itself, just taking it off the black market. The major outlook that I have over the whole situation as far as jobs, like, even a strip club, everything like that, is that the respect they want to teach basically the middle class and lower class society mm-hmm. to look down on it. The high end societies looks at it for what it is. And that's who I get this image from. Like, think about it, drug dealers, mm-hmm. Jay-Z. Jay-Z talk about how he was in the game, never got caught. Yeah. Probably got the most respect. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? Yeah, and he explained it. He still want kids to go to school. He still want people to pursue different uh, avenues. <laughs> but he explained in that in the environment he was in, you got to get money how you can. Yeah. You got to reach the heights that you want to get to how you can. Mm-hmm. If you want to be corporate, you you might not. It's a good chance you ain't gonna make it from the hood. So you got to create your own path. Right. You know what I'm saying? Strippers, things like that. Like people respect these people. Once they become something, yeah, middle class positive. Cause think about it, like the Jay Z example, and I'm. This is gonna sound controversial, but just hear me out, people. I'm going with it. Jay Z, the drug dealer turned rapper story. I'm not gonna. I won't put it just on Jay Z. I'll just say that the drug dealer yeah. turned rapper story, which is very common in hip hop. Very you know common. That's the same thing, essentially. For a stripper to become not necessarily a rapper, but to become an entertainment mogul of sorts. Yeah. So Amber Rose, Lisa Ray, Lisa Ray, um, Black China's doing it right now. Uh, Cardi B, Cardi yeah. B got a fire track out right now. Yeah, that that shit is hard. Like <laughs> I really don't, you know. Like and this is gonna sound sexist, but whatever it is, what it is, like you know. Uh, I typically don't rock with too many female rappers, but this song, like I like every, pretty much everything that Remy does. Like Remy's fire yeah. all the way. Like there's there's definitely female rappers. I think it's rappers. just it's generational for me. Like and after it's, it's the voice. Like, after it's really after, what after their a voice certain point, like. I, I hate to say it, after a certain point, I just lost respect for the female artists. Like back in the day, you had Missy, you had Tony, you had MC Light, you had yeah, Queen. they were all fire. Yeah, like. like no matter what, you it's, you it's like Nikki. You some stuff it so she does much. is cool. Some most of it is whack. I feel like, but Remy's hard all the time, and this Cardi B song is fire. But yeah. she's another one, so it's like, you know, that that is the equivalent in my mind. Like the female hustler essentially yeah. is usually in that field. It so it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like what you said. You know, they're using. Look, the world's gonna exploit this anyway. I might as well benefit yeah. first. But it's like, it's like the way society is built, we don't appreciate the process, we appreciate the accomplishment. And yeah, that's and that's, yeah. that's just how it is struggle. across the board, no matter what it is. If you get into a relationship right now, if you like at the point where you just met the person, you really don't want to tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you don't want to bring it to your family because they might not like your process. Five years later, when y'all getting married and all that, then they're going to be happy for you. Then they're going to be, oh, I'm happy. I'm glad you got married. That's a wonderful young lady. But during the process, they don't want to, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with jobs and things like that. If you take a job, I feel like it's a pressure on, well, me, I'm going to relate to college students because that's the environment um, that I'm familiar with. With college students, it's pressure on them to go into the major that they graduated with. Oh, 
my son just became a lawyer. He's going to be the greatest lawyer on earth. Yeah. For the first five years, he does jobs that has nothing to do with being a lawyer. Not right. even close. Not, yeah. Not even remotely close. That's it might have just been it might have just been a hobby that he had in tenth grade mm-hmm. that he still enjoys and he might just like it. He's gonna it's gonna be this unspoken, kind of frowned upon feeling like you know what I'm saying? Like kind of I mean, supposed like, to be a lawyer. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna be that feeling, that discouragement. Mm-hmm. But if he becomes successful, then it's gonna be a lot of appreciation. Yeah. That's you know true. What I'm That's true. Uh, we need to be, yeah, man. Appreciate the process, not just the results. You feel me? Like, yeah. Because the process is what makes the results feel so good. Like yeah. it's, it's not. Because like, if you think about it, like most people who have like just overnight instant success or whatever, like, for one, a lot of times they don't hold on to it because they don't. It, it hit them too fast and they yeah. didn't work and grind for it, so they don't appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? And then number two, like, it's just a better feeling when you work towards a goal and then accomplish it. Yeah. Versus it being handed to you. It just feels better. You get so much more out of it. So much more. Like, and I'm not saying that, like, like, because I appreciate people's help, too. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody helps me in accomplishing that goal, I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still working towards the goal, ultimately. I'm just not. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's, uh... That's that. I, th- I think that's a good way to, to end it, Loki. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying. Appreciate the process, not the results. You feel me? Not just the results. Um, shout out to the Pod Squad. Shout out to the Critical Dump Network, Real and Raw Podcast, Talk It Out Podcast. Um, they had a great conversation with a dude uh, named uh, Kilo Righteous on yeah. Twitter. And they always going back and forth on like gay uh, rights issues and transgender issues and things of that nature. So when I saw that they did the podcast together, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. And they were talking about the Trump uh, transgender ban and everything. And it was a, it was actually a great conversation, like, because they kept it very civil the whole time. And yeah. so he was able to explain why a lot of straight men feel the way they feel about the transgender community because he was basically explaining to them like look you guys are in the gay community so you might have been aware of these issues way long before us but to a lot of us this is new like you know yeah. what i'm saying so yeah. this is our first time like really having to deal with it on a, on a large scale or whatever and I, I i just i feel like he did a good job of explaining it in a way that you know, not everyone it who didn't doesn't come off the wrong way. Yeah, it didn't come off like bigoted or whatever. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, on 140 characters, you know, on Twitter, yeah. like that shit comes out all sorts of wrong. Yeah. And I'd be like, whoa. Dude. All you can do is get your point across, but you can't. Yeah, get, like you yeah. can't finesse it in there. Yeah. Like you just gotta. And I'm like, you Yo. just gotta throw it out there and hope they catch it. Yeah, and I'm like, nah. Most of the time, people ain't catching that, bro. Like you gotta, you gotta, you wildin', son. Like you know what I'm saying? But they had a great conversation. So shout out to them. Um, y'all should check that episode out for sure. Um, I like that though. I like because I got a lot of strong opinions about like controversial issues, mm-hmm. and I like the I like the feedback because I like what we get from news and um, like actual commercial networks is all scripted. You don't want any controversy. You don't want that's any why I watch all my stuff. You don't stuff want online. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would. I want my personal growth. Like, with this podcast, I want this to be a group thing. Like, if I'm putting my opinion out here, if it's wrong, let me know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to grow with y'all. This is my job. Like, if I'm on if I'm on um, First Take Sports or if I'm on Breakfast Club, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. When we talking opinions and I know my fan base is there. I know the people who hate me is there. If both of them is going to follow me. If you hate me, you're going to follow me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you love me, you're going to follow me. So why don't we just make this growth process? Because you might grow to like me. You might grow to, to know who I am. Really not like me. Right. So I'll put my opinion straight out there. Like like um, me and I have a lot of female friends. Mm-hmm. And they have gay friends and transgender friends. I don't mind. But when you get to a certain point, I can't deal with you. When you take it too far, I can't. And they like, oh, you're not supposed to say that. I'm telling you who I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if you're a grown man, you like 6'6", and I catch you in a pencil skirt, some Uggs, some shit like that, no. 
I can't rock with you. I don't care who you are. It's no, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, but see, here's here's the thing, though, right? Like, I don't feel like it's inherently bigoted to be uncomfortable or to feel like, wow, that's different. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Or for that to make you even step back, like, whoa. But it's just a different thing when you take it to the point of, you know, hatred or thinking yeah. that that person. Yeah, like it ain't it ain't no hatred. But yeah, you it's know, just it's like just it like, makes you feel weird. Yeah. Like, it's almost like like. And I, it's it's anytime you see anything like that's out of your ordinary, you know what I mean? Like yeah. anytime you see anything out of your ordinary, it's gonna throw you off. Like, period. So, if you live in if you live in China, you know what I'm saying? There's the majority of the people that you're gonna see are gonna be Chinese people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if a really tall, dark, if Dikembe Mutombo was walking around in uh, in China. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People are gonna be thrown off by that. Yeah. Like, whoa, that's not. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's out of the ordinary. Yeah. Like, so I think a lot of times that's the reaction. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, like I said, like I don't think that makes you a bigot just because you don't want to be best friends with that person. Yeah. Because it's like, y'all probably don't have that much in common. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, at the end of the day, like, we can have a conversation. Like, I can be like, you know, I can learn stuff from you like i've had conversations with somebody who it, and it was crazy because i found out that the guy was transgender born of a female like way after yeah. we had you know hung out a couple of times yeah. and like you know what i'm saying all types of stuff and it didn't really make me change my opinion on him i was just like wow that's a really interesting thing because yeah. i never in my i don't think i've ever met any before hey <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying so, see that would have blew my mind yeah that would have blew my mind off rip because i it never blew my mind more so because we it was a person i used to work with when i first moved yeah. out here and again presentation wise and like for all intents and purposes this is a man you yeah. know what i'm saying and um like not on no funny stuff or nothing like that but like you know you've been in the bathroom with people or whatever and you know they got urinals yeah. like next to each other with stood next to the dude at the urinal before yeah. you know what i'm saying so for him to have been born a woman and yeah. present himself all the way masculine now and like i was completely like i would have never known you know what yeah. i mean so when i thought back on that it kind of made me think about like the whole bathroom thing when people are like you know you should you have to go into the bathroom that you were born as or whatever i'm like if y'all want people to go in the bathroom that they were born as that's gonna freak people out more. Because <laughs> if this person yeah. goes in the bathroom he was born as, then it's gonna be a man walking in the woman's bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Period. Like, but it's so, just a lot of strong opinions. Like bullying. It's, but I think I, it, it's just, not not to cut you off real quick. But it uh, it's it's I, I think it's just the more you learn about things. Like, cause I didn't understand transgender. I didn't understand gay for a long time. I didn't understand bisexual. Like, I yeah. used to be one of the dudes who was like, "There's no such thing as bisexual. You're gay, nigga." Yeah. Like, that's not true you know yeah. what i'm saying like there's a so like just over time like i've learned about all of this and i feel like you know if you give people the chance to learn about stuff without being defensive yeah. that's that's where i feel like the some people in the lgbt community they get way too defensive sometimes yeah i think I when think you have community, questions their community is real defensive and um, i get it because they're attacked a lot a you know lot, what i'm uh, saying and they're their community is bigger than what they know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everybody don't expose themselves. Exactly. So so I think it's more of a norm. Because historically, we learned it's been happening our whole life, right? Forever. So I think it's a norm. But the fact that they're more defensive, it brings a lot of de- attention to them. And I think, like, it's, it's harder to gain understanding when you're really defensive. Because a lot of times, things that they'll take offense to is really just questions like yeah. you know what i'm saying it's really just a genuine question that somebody might have like yo i really want to notice like yeah and then you might get offended at that or whatever and then it's like I, i'm i'm your ally you know what i'm yeah. saying like at the end of the day i want you to have the same rights as everybody else yeah i'm just i need to know like you know or maybe don't need to know or whatever but i'm genuinely curious about xyz whatever yeah. you know what i mean so i feel like both sides like you know, be open-minded and be willing to learn about other people, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, whatever, like, not just transgenders or whatever, I don't know really how we got off under that, but, uh, I, I like, think you a, know what I'm saying, a but, lot, a lot but of just the, people in general, just be open-minded, be willing to learn about other people, and then, also, if somebody wants to learn more about you, be willing to teach them. I think it's, a, it's hard, too, because, like I say, like, if you... 
it's easy for them to get defensive because they have to go through the most. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have to go through the, uh, especially if they're like a minority mm-hmm. and they in that situation, they yeah. have to go you through the most. double minority. Abs- yeah, like, <laughs> you have to go through the most. So, they, I think they just stay in this defensive mindset. And that makes sense. When they wake up. Like, my niggas, but, like, we be the same way. Yeah, like, like, whenever we see the police, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's oh, shit. it's like, cool, but at the same time, you got to think what level you know what I'm saying? What category do people with? like me? If you walk up to me and like addressing them Uggs, I'm not messing with you. But that's not you know what I'm saying? That's the same as me. Like I've been to um I've been to like some type of it was like a hard metal concert or something like that. And it was people with with you know what I'm saying, piercings all crazy, face paint, you know what right. I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm not rocking with you either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not the same thing. It's not I don't hate y'all. It's yeah. just that, that's not my element. You're choosing to express yourself how you express yeah. yourself, and that's cool, but I, that ain't got nothing to do with Cause me. Because I got, it's it's same aspect. It's overly aggressive. Everybody knows somebody who's overly aggressive from their neighborhood, and you like, no, nah, I'm not rocking with them. You know what I'm saying? That's like, true. But I think, I think that community has this specific mindset mm-hmm. to where they think they go in a different category, which is the worst category. They don't think it's people just like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just not in that mindset right now. Like, I could deal with the punk one day. I could deal with the dress this day. And I could deal with the overly aggressive dude at work this day. You know what I'm saying? I feel it, man. I feel it. We, we, I think we, um, I'm going to invite them on the show, actually. So, because I think that'll be an interesting uh, don't, talk. Don't invite the overly aggressive. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's, it's going to be the talk at all, uh, <laughs> ladies. Like, they, you know, yeah, they, they super cool. Gabby yeah. Petty was was popping y'all. I'm gonna have him on the show, and I think, um, I think because I think a lot of the questions that you might have, or just a lot of the like feelings that you might have, like I feel like that would be a good conversation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I feel like they, they would be, like I said, there there'll be those people that you can just ask questions, like, well, what about this? How do y'all feel about this? Like. You know what does this mean, or you know whatever, just anything yeah. that you don't know, like you gotta ask them and their girls. So that might make you not as, you know, what I'm saying that yeah. might make you feel a little more comfortable with it because they're they're females, you know. So you're not asking, you know, a dude anything that you might be uncomfortable yeah. with. You know what I'm saying? Like just, you like, know. bro, let me ask you a suspect question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like that might not make you feel comfortable. So you know, I, I'm gonna invite them on. I feel like uh, that would be a good one. Yeah, but um. Yeah, everybody else who I might have missed, y'all know, you know, it's all love. Uh, Bar Babes, what's up? Penrose versus anybody. He's back. What's happening? Um, yeah. Uh, Shane G, Classic Wood, Midwest Coast. We out.